And you are live, I think. But I didn't, my name didn't come up. Your name is there. His name is there. You're live. So, welcome. Um, Richard Saul Warman, the creator of TED, and I'm Juan Enriquez, and we're going to talk about dividing and redividing and the future of nations. Um, we both come at this from different viewpoints. Uh, Richard comes up thinking about understanding, understanding, and whether we can understand each other. And I come at it because I wrote a book in 2005 that argued there's going to be a giant financial crisis. It's going to be driven by over leverage and real estate. And the consequence is going to be long-term polarization of nations. The title of that book was The Untied States of America, Polarization, Fracturing in Our Future. And the thing which both Richard and I are interested in is how do people come together? How do they understand each other? What is understanding? And that turns out for me very strange questions like how many stars will be in the U.S. flag in 50 years? And the reason that's a reasonable question is because there's never been a president of the United States that's been buried under the same number of stars he was born under. And until there's a president born after 1959 that dies with no change in the flag, that will continue to be true. I think the same question can apply to the European Union. When you look at the number of stars in the European Union, do you think there will be more? Do you think there will be less? So, Richard, what do we have to do to understand each other? Well, uh, hello, everybody out there, or wherever you are. Um, Juan and I are friends because we do different things, but we find places to connect because those places to connect have a similar way of organization scale. They obey certain rules of communication and understanding. I, uh, uh, I have a fairly small life, and I have a, my passion is uh, is a, a simple word that is not uh, it's not it's not politically charged, seemingly because it's the word understanding. I mean, we want understanding parents, we want understanding an understandable religion, we want understanding. is a is a warm word, uh, but it's something we don't practice. So, for instance, at this moment, there's no two cities in the world that do their maps to the same scale. Therefore, there's no countries you can compare similar things. You can compare some numbers that some numbers that we can't understand. We're we're bouncing around numbers in the United States of, in the trillions, and uh, there's no time in this little short essay here, verbal essay, picture essay, to prove to you that you don't understand what that word trillion means. You can't conceive of it. You can't handle it. You can't compare it to anything. So my uh, uh, one way of understanding what uh, something was what Juan just said, and I didn't know that before, and that was terrific. And I really, I will remember that because it's very interesting. And it was made, uh, the rules he used to tell that story were poignant. Uh, seldom do we have anything told with that kind of angels of clarity attached to it. And I believe we can only, it's only possible to make, it, to have his ending not come out if there is understanding uh, between uh, some groups and then some groups of countries and then all the countries together or groups of countries uh, uh, together having some understanding. So that what somebody says is understood by the other party. Very difficult in this world, perhaps impossible in the way that treaties and agreements and language separates us all. I, you know, I think that's a really interesting point because it, it, there seem to be, I mean, one of the things you do so well is you create multi-level maps of cities where you can go 30 layers down from the buildings through the people, through the religions, through the sewer systems, through the electrical systems, and all the way back up again. And in a very strange way, the debates that are going on today 
we've tripled the number of flags, borders, and anthems in Europe in a few decades. Mm -hmm. And we still have debates as to whether the Welsh or the Catalans or the Basques or the Northern Italians or the Walloons or the Southern Finns or the Corsicans or any one of these groups becomes a supplet flag border and anthem. And in a very weird way, the umbrella of the European Union reduces the cost of separatism because you still are defended by the European Union. You still have a ability to travel and work everywhere. You still have reasonably common laws. So this multilateral system, this overarching umbrella in a weird way enables separatism. And then going down one more layer, um, the whole trend of self-identification into ever smaller groups. Um, it's not just that I am gay anymore. I am LGBTQ and the letters keep going on. I am uh, Asian American. I am Mexican American. I am Salvadorian American. I am Nicaraguan American, Cuban American. And, and this ability to self-identify and partially belong to groups within this overarching community at, at one point uh, almost allows us to go back into tribes and medieval cities where we wall ourselves off from everybody else. So how do you create understanding within that? Well, uh, I will answer that after I tell you one other thing. When the world recently, and I'll say basically the world has declared we're in a pandemic, and that word pandemic means the whole world. That's what the pan means in pandemic. That's why they wait a little while to see if it really is around the world. And yet, uh, I'm going to just say there's 200 countries. Uh, and of those 200 countries, let's say 180 of them uh, have air traffic <laughs> around the world. I don't know if those are scientifically right, but they approach it. Most of them you can get to, you can get from one place to another in this world. And each of these uh, 200 countries has different regulations and rules about infections, number of infections, reporting infections, where the infections occur and to whom and what age group. So actually pandemic understanding can happen and worldwide kind of regulations can help solve a very difficult problem. And we don't take advantage of our communication systems the fact that everybody now is connected off the cloud and off the web and, 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 and with Wi-Fi. And we don't do things that can have understandable, have a group that can make an understandable series of, of uh, rules, regulations, ages, what is efficient way to uh, create uh, a... a if not a cure for this, uh, dampen down a, a terrible situation. So. I, I agree with that. And take it down one layer. It's not just that we don't have a global system to standardize the reporting and the measures against the pandemic. It's that even within the European Union and within the United States or untied states, mm -hmm. you have this patchwork of regulations. Absolutely. Exactly. That, At every level, it doesn't work. And, and that's led to millions and millions of deaths. So there is a enormous incentive on something that should be non-controversial, like we shouldn't let our elders die, to create greater understanding and unity. And somehow, we seem to be having the pandemic disunite us more and more. There's this centripetal pull against centralized authority. But we did have that with smallpox. Everybody caved and you had to legally have smallpox. Uh, now it's up to the individual whether they get a different vaccination against the pandemic. So what at one time was agreed upon virtually around the world that you got a smallpox in bed to, to make smallpox disappear. Uh, and polio. But polio, they made a mistake in that they had one of the vaccines had live uh, live viruses, so 
it continues through the systems, through excrement and other things. It doesn't die out completely. Smallpox, they basically enlist the existing smallpox things in two or three labs ever gets released, uh, it's gone. So if somebody made you vice prince of the European Union yeah. and your job was to make the European Union more efficient, create greater understanding and avoid the continuous fragmentation of nations into ever smaller units, how would you start thinking about that? Well, certainly the guidelines would come from cartography and making uh, maps and, and reporting and uh, a, com a comparative way. Uh, for, uh, let me give you a funny example. The most, for a while, the most popular paperback in the United States was a big atlas called the Rand McNally Road Atlas. And everybody had one in a car that was the mapping system. It's no longer used because we use other maps now. But this was, this was indigenous to America. And it was organized alphabetically uh, by the state name. Now, you don't drive across the United States alphabetically, but the organization was capricious. And since every state filled up a page, every map was a different scale. So there was a time warp at the border uh, from, from one page to another because the distances were different. The scale was different. Was different. Uh, well, when I tell the story that way, of course, it seems ridiculous. Uh, how it happened was that every state before that had mapped their own state, and the Graham McNally Road Atlas put the rights to those maps, and they were all at different scales. So they basically put them in their book. <laughs> and it was because that's the way the United States was mapped. That's the way Europe is mapped. There's more regulations of mapping systems in Europe than there ever were between the states and America. But one of the ways they, they put a slow down to almost stop, and now it's flaring up again, uh, of, uh, of Ebola was a mapping company coming in there uh, and doing GIS maps because every country mapped the cases in a different way. The maps of the countries were a different scale. Uh, the severity, the deaths, everything was different in every maps. So they couldn't see the pattern of that disease and where how it was spread. So, so if, you gave me, if you gave me that job, make me secretary of understanding and create some standards. That's all. It wouldn't be political. It would just be taking some standards of the most important information that people would like to know about. The patterns. So I think what you're saying is it's not just that it's a table where politicians talk at each other and say, we want to hug each other and understand each other. There, there can be these incredibly powerful divisions hidden in things as silly as building codes. So mm -hmm. I'm reminded of, you know, the Yucatan for years had a separatist tendency because they're Mayans and the Aztecs were not the most appreciated people. Mm -hmm. And so for thousands of years, there'd been this division. And, and you could see it in the time when railroads were the way you got around. The mm -hmm. railroad gauge in the Yucatan was a completely different gauge from the rest of Mexico. Mm -hmm. So you actually could not transport things seamlessly between Mexico and the Yucatan, mm -hmm. because all of a sudden the railroad gauge got very small. Mm -hmm. And as you think about the design of US cities, They've put things into these things that dehumanize cities in the most fundamental ways. You, the streets have to be structured in such a way that two fire trucks can pass each other at 60 miles an hour without danger. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it creates a dehumanization. Bohemian part of Paris, it's the narrowness of those streets that has now been prohibited by these codes. And I'm, I'm wondering which of the codes leads to this tendency towards disunity and centripetal as opposed to towards understanding. Well, but I'll go back to even the first part of what of this little rift you went on. If the people from different nations are sitting around a table 
they can all point to the map and they all understand the same map and they all understand, understand have commonality of understanding of a subject or a problem or a pattern. And therefore, they're, they're talking to each other. They try all to speak the same language. And you hear English. Uh, you need commonality to see patterns, and you need common scale, common weighting, and you either decide forever that North is up, or you don't, or you can't talk to each other. So that's a really interesting question. If you had a universal translator in your ear, which we should have in the next decade. Yeah, I think it's, it's coming. It's, 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 and, and, it, and very smooth, you know, a very smooth system. Yeah, the, the question is going to be on the nuance. The question is going to be on the humor. The question is going to be on the insults. You know, we've all seen these memes that run around of what a person means when they say X versus another country when they say something very similar, but it's a very different meaning and a very different implication. Uh, I think humor and the nuance is is a uh, is very difficult and. Uh, if we could solve problems that are measurable uh, first, I think we have a chance. And that maybe we let humor go and accept that food in different countries has different recipes and made of different things. And celebrate differences, re wonderful differences, certain cultural differences, celebrate them. But on these policy things with health, wealth, war, borders have a commonality, a way of talking about measurable things. And I'll leave, I will be happy to give up humor and keep my sense of humor. I mean, you don't have a good sense of humor. I do. Uh, keep, keep a sense of humor, <laughs> private and cultural, as, as well as food, right? Um, we can solve everything, but but humor and food, I, I think we're okay. So let's let's push that a little bit. Um, the the way in which we're solving crises today is by not really making a lot of sacrifices. I mean, part of the reason why this pandemic got so far out of control is because a whole series of areas said, "Well, this doesn't apply to me," or "I'm not going to mask," or "I'm not going to shut my borders," or "I'm not going to do." X, Y, or Z. If you're thinking about that, it's been the same thing in the financial system. But nobody, in a sense, I'll well, spend a trillion dollars this week and another trillion next week. But it's nobody has told the story of a pandemic that's in somewhat in the lifetimes of old people, which was, which is the one I just talked about, smallpox. We have we've been through this before, and everybody agreed. And nobody's made an example of that. Uh, yep. As with our conversation, this will be off the point. This is personal, tough guys, of making a point of the, the Chiapas story with the Quintana Roo. That there's been times in recent, fairly recent history, which they were solved in certain ways that people can remember. And makes them more vivid instead of as a unique experience of why did this happen to us on our watch? No, it's going to happen again. <laughs> it's going to happen again. It's, there's a certain inevitability, maybe not in my lifetime because I'm so old, but it's going to happen again in my grandkids' lifetimes. There's going to be an outbreak. Of, if we go along the way we're going, there's going to be an outbreak of a certain a uh, leak of, of some uh, chemicals or some animal to human or human to animal back to human disease that, that could take off like crazy. Because there's been more and more of those happening over the last uh, three decades. Well, what gives me hope in that is that there have been many Asian countries that suffered SARS and MERS 
that seem to have come through this far, far better than countries that haven't had a pandemic for a long time. Yeah. And hopefully we will learn something. Yeah, we didn't call those pandemics though. This is a pandemic and, uh, and uh, smallpox was a pandemic. I don't know if the influenza thing was called a pandemic when it happened in the 1670, 1970. Uh, that, calling it that, gives reason to solve, make some of the solutions and worldwide. Well, we better do that because otherwise the number of variants that will come and overwhelm the countries that have already vaccinated will increase massively. I mean, the, the United States is a poster child of what not to do, have every state do it differently and within the state's cities doing it differently. The regulations within cities within states and state by state are all different. It's, we're a poster job for confused, we're really messing up. Yes, we are. Um, and hopefully next time we won't do that. Well, I hope. Anyway, I think our time is up. Is that fair? Yeah, stop streaming, stop, it says it is red. Okay. Okay, sure. great fun as always. Nice. Okay, let's talk some. When you get your next draft, let's talk. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Wasn't bad. <laughs> Take care. Yeah.